Good boys and girls, and welcome to episode 47 of Love at First Scent with me, Persolace, coming to you today from YouTube Live. Thank you very much for tuning in if you are, have tuned in to the live broadcast. Uh, we're going to do a similar sort of thing today compared to what, what we've been doing in the last few weeks. I'm going to talk you through um, a, a couple of perfumes from this brand here that you may recognise. Then we'll finish the video. We'll have about a 10 minute break and we'll go into another one. And the other one is going to be on a new release from Frederick Mal. Rachel says, hey, hey, right back at you. Thank you for tuning in. As per usual, I just need to make sure that everything is okay on the old tablet, and then we will be able to get going straight away. It looks as though things are fine. One thing I should say, as I'm just looking at the tablet and, and, and um, checking to make sure I can see comments, uh, Fahmi says hello, hello back at you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Tell me where you are and what the weather is like wherever you are because the, it is it is uh, really, really miserable down here in the south of England today. And Rachel says I've been a big Lynn Harris fan from Miller Harris days. I don't blame you. Um, and I think, uh, are you aware of her Perfumer 8 range? Because if you haven't tried um, the latest collection, I think you'll be very impressed. Perfumer 8 is back, says Ashfaq. Yes, yes. But I should say, I am very, very conscious of the fact that for those of you who like tuning in live, I I'm not actually giving you a huge amount of notice about when um, when the, the the live broadcasts are going to happen. And, you know, it's, it's not some kind of deliberate ploy to keep you in the dark and to mess around with you. I would love to be able to give you as much notice as possible, um, but it's just that things are conspiring against me at the moment. And this morning I woke up. And I thought, might I be able to do a live broadcast at around, you know, midday UK time? Maybe not. And it was only around about 11.30 that I thought, yes, OK, I should be able to do it. Let's go for it. So I, I, I promise you, I, I will try to give you as much notice as possible. But at the moment, that is just proving a little bit difficult. And it is still very much on my mind to do uh, a long form Love at First Scent video. I thought I might be able to do one this weekend that didn't happen, maybe next weekend. I would really like to be able to do one roundabout next weekend because then when November starts, I'm probably not going to be able to do hardly any videos, maybe just a bare minimum. But anyway, this is all just a very long-winded apology for not giving you as much notice as I would like to of these videos, but at least you get to watch them after the live broadcast. Uh, don't forget, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please give me thumbs up and hearts and likes wherever you happen to be watching it. But most importantly, please, please, please feel free to interact, to leave a comment, ask a question. I really enjoy hearing from you and I always learn so much from you. And also to those of you who have supported me on my coffee page, um, thank you very much indeed. Okay, I missed a few comments. Uh, Fahmi says, good evening from Indonesia. Uh, there is no website, says Rachel. What for Perfumer H? Or does it still say website coming soon? No, it's, it's, it's so weird because, well, anyway, maybe maybe they don't need internet sales, I don't know. Sunny day down here, says Ashfaq, but I wouldn't mind some colder weather here. I remember I remember what that felt like, because I, I, I grew up in, in the Middle East, as some of you may be aware. The, the whoops of joy that you could hear going up and down the country uh, whenever there was a the slightest suggestion of rain. But anyway, greetings from a sunny Vienna today, says Peggy. You get around, don't you? A uh, nice day in Cornwall, says Rachel. Really? Uh, sniffy, sniffy time. Yes, absolutely. Um, I still wore a Nubis from Papillon in this weather, says Ashfag. And why not? I must try the new one from, from Papillon, actually. Uh, what's it called? Uh, ben Bengal Rouge? Um, so there you go, a very, very apt name, Ashfaq. Okay, enough of all of that. Uh, don't forget, whatever we smell in this episode, there will be a blotter update uh, a few hours after the initial broadcast. Very, very quickly then, um, for those of you who are not aware, Perfumer H have a very interesting way of releases their, releasing their fragrances because they have, they have a, a, a kind of core range. I go into this into a lot more detail actually in another video that I've done on Perfumer H. So just on, on YouTube, search for Persolace Perfumer H or on Persolace.com in the Perfume Review. On the Perfume Review page, you can search for uh, the Perfumer H video. They have a core group that never changes, a core group of scents, but they also do a summer collection and a winter collection. And this is this year's winter collection. This is winter 2019. And what Lynn Harris usually does is that she releases five scents in each collection, but interestingly, they don't all have to be new. Uh, some of them are ones that she may have done in the past that she thinks would fit in with, with, with whatever concept or theme she's gone for for the particular collection. 
Um, somewhat annoyingly, I haven't been able to find out which of these uh, is new and which is old. I have a feeling that I know that one of them is old, but anyway, uh, they are for the for, for winter 2019. We won't smell all of them, but I'd like to be able to smell two if we can. They are, you can see from the list here, Angelica, Rose Oil, Gold, White Smoke and Tobacco. The two I'd particularly like to focus on today are Gold and White Smoke because I think they're very interesting. And each one is <clears throat> very consciously made in a particular perfume style or genre. So the, the 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 gold that we're going to smell is meant to be the citrus scent. Uh, the rose oil is the floral, as you could imagine. The angelica is the fougere. And the tobacco is the wood scent. And the white smoke is the oriental. So I think on that note, we should just smell them. We ought to start with a lighter one first. I have had initial sniffs of all of them, but I'd like to share with you the two that I was particularly taken with. Uh, because go gold, gold, I actually thought was one of the most gorgeous uh, citrus scents I've smelt for a long time. M maybe because it isn't actually just uh, a straight up citrus. But anyway, let's spray some. I should do this here actually. For I haven't got full bottles, uh, but but um, I'm only saying that because it means I can't show you a full bottle. That's what one of their um, press sample or sample vials looks like. Sorry, I don't know if we got cut off there. Did we get cut off? I'm not sure if we got cut off, but, and I don't know whether that means that the video was cut short, um, but well, anyway, we'll find out. The, 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 the counter, the time on the video is saying that we haven't actually stopped, so I guess we're okay. Um, what was I saying? The actual Perfumer H bottles are um, pretty expensive. They're in beautiful hand-blown glass. Um, I'm sort of swooning now because I'm getting uh, Rachel says, yes, a bit cut off, still going and in sync. Weird. Do you know what? I'm, I'm not going to complain though because we haven't actually had a technology issue for a while. So if we're good, we're good. The, jo the, joys, of, the joys of live broadcast. If Radio 4 and the Today programme can have problems, then Purcell Ace can have broadcasting problems in his little guest room. Anyway, we have just sprayed gold, the citrus scent from the winter 2019 collection from Perfumer H, Lynn Harris's brand. And, and I'll tell you what, gold it, it is just the most perfect name for this. When I saw the list of names, I thought that maybe gold might turn out to be the Oriental. The first thing that I thought of, um, and it's interesting, oh, I think things have, th have things gone funny on the tablet, or are we still okay? By the way, um, oh, as as Shvark says there was a glitch, but I think we're okay. You didn't miss anything, uh, so, so I think we're all right. Uh, Lynn Smell says bonjour from New York and actually it's very appropriate that we've got some input from France because I'll tell you what gold made me think of. Uh, a couple of years ago I was in Antibes, one of my, uh, in the south of France, one of my absolute favourite places in the world, if not actually be my all-time favourite but never mind we won't go there. And there's a really really gorgeous traditional patisserie there called Patisserie Cotard run by Monsieur and Madame Cotard and they run uh, classes every now and then. If you ever find yourself in that part of the world, do pop down to Patisserie Cotard and see if they're doing any classes because they're always good fun. Uh, the the you know the master patissier there, Christian Cotard, um, is not 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 just an excellent pastry chef, but he's also a really really fun and engaging teacher. And um, I went for one of his classes that was specifically on making a traditional lemon meringue tart. And I remember him saying that for pastry chefs and for chefs in general, um, the, the lemon is considered to be gold uh, because it is so useful and so versatile and so valuable and every single bit of it can be used. Like in, in the lemon meringue tart, we, we used obviously the zest, we used the juice, etc, etc. Nothing, nothing has to go to waste. And it's just so evocative of its colour and it's so valuable, which is why I think calling a citrus scent gold is just perfectly right and it immediately made me think of that that class that I did down in the south of France a few years ago. Uh, good morning from Toronto, says Anna. Thank you very much for tuning in. Now, what are we getting here? This feels to me mostly orangey, orange blossomy, sneaky join in from work. Oh, okay, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> Ilias from Athens. Yasu uh, we. Oh, 
I hope nobody else at work is checking out YouTube at the moment, but never mind. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just carried away by this and I can't focus to tell you to, to, to tell you what's in here. It's definitely an orange blossomy citrus um, and it's got just such a superbly well judged indolic facet. It never gets too mothbally, but but that that suggestion of funkiness, that suggestion of danger, that suggestion of earthiness, that suggestion of death, really, which sometimes is what makes the best perfume so interesting, is just there because you, you can't help but thinking of death and decay when you think of fruit. And, and, and I really, really don't want to miss sell this. You know, th th this is beautiful. <laughs> you know, this, I'm not sort of saying this is a goth citrus scent. Um, so I don't want to overplay the, the the metaphysical death aspect of it. But 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 John Dunn probably would have liked this scent. It would have been it, it's it's the it is the kind of perfume that makes you think of the totality of a, of a fruit tree. You know, the fact that the flower has to die in order for the for the fruit to appear, that the fruit will decay and rot and that there's something beautiful in the fact that that cycle will be repeated and that kind of ties in really really gorgeously with the fact that this is this is a cyclical connect collection it is a seasonal collection um gold is here now but it may be gone um and j j just in terms you know in more concrete olfactory terms i don't know what lynn harris has done here but she has conjured the most seductive musk cocktail for the base. If there's one thing that defines Lynn Harris's style now for Perfumer Age, and I said this in the last video, it's the sense of restraint. It's it's a sense of elegant restraint, which 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 can sometimes be as much of a weakness as it is a strength. When we come on to smell the Oriental, my one criticism, if we if I could use so strong a word, but my one criticism of the Oriental is that I just wish it had a little bit more oomph. It I wish it had a bit more volume, a bit more power. Um, but but in a way, it's also admirable that even though she's made an Oriental, Lynn Harris hasn't given in to any sort of pressure or urge to make it more of a powerhouse. She's she's made an Oriental in her usual Zen minimalist style. Um, it's interesting I say Zen actually because she also has a superb incense range. Apparently she's added a new scent to the incense collection. I haven't smelt it yet. Um, but the musk base that she made for this, when I wore this the other day, I had one of those moments that you wait for, I think, as a perfume fan and as a perfume critic. One of those, what smells so good, oh, it's me moments. And I got this completely from gold because I knew where the beautiful orangey citrusy top was coming from. But it took me a while to realize that, that the musk cocktail was, was coming from the same scent. And in that sense, it reminded me a little bit of the cologne Andelebile, the indelible cologne from Frederick Mal. Although it's nowhere near as, as loud and large, I suppose, it, it, it takes that same unending cologne idea, but makes it much more Lynn Harris and much more restrained. Uh, missed a comment. Ashwag says, how? Are the indolic and rough edges of orange blossom absolute or narrowly cir circumvented here? Um, how? Good question. I mean, it, it feels as though, I mean, Lynn Harris's scents are quite seamless. Angeline says, hi, hello, you've managed to tune in. Fantastic. Angeline, there's another video after this one as well, so stay tuned if you can. Lynn Harris's scents are so seamless that it, it is quite difficult to deconstruct them. Has she has she done it with sweetness? Because there there is there is a sense of sugariness coming through, maybe a vanillic stickiness, but not overly done. Definitely something floral. Um, you know, has she used has she used a suggestion of rose to smooth out the edges? But but in all honesty, I I'm not sure. You know, I'd have to I'd have to sit and think about. It. Maybe we can ask her. Maybe I can send her an email. Ilya says, "I love those mysterious whiffs you get at those moments when you're surprised that it's actually the scent you're wearing." Yes, absolutely. It happened the first time I wore Baccarat Rouge. <laughs> Fine, you know I'm not a fan of Baccarat Rouge, but never mind. I know loads of people are. And Angeline says, "Yeah, I'm viewing surreptitiously in the office." You naughty people! <laughs> there's no way I could do that at work. Well, there's no way I could do that at work because we don't even have decent reception at work. Good day to you. Uh, nice sweater, says Arkadiusz. 
Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much indeed. It, I'm, it's the second time I'm wearing this on a love at first sight. I've decided I don't have enough clothes to do the whole thing of not wearing the same outfit twice. That's out the window. It can't happen. Uh, Steve says, so happy I caught alive. It's been a while. Don't want to change the topic, but just want to quickly know, have you tried the Floris Vert Fougere? No, I haven't. I've got a sample, but I haven't tried it yet. I, I hope to try it soon. We need to move on because I want to try another one from Perfumer H. Um, and then we'll have a brief pause before we do a new release from Frederick Mao. But just to read what um, the press release says, a, a British perfume maker giving insight into her craft for the first time through the creation of Perfumer H. That's um, the, the sort of tagline for Perfumer H. The collection is themed around pure and precious raw materials and has inspired a series of still life paintings by the artist Jason Lyne for gold, rose oil, angelica, tobacco and white smoke and there are also ash charcoal and smoke candles to celebrate winter 2019 i've never tried any of their candles so i can't say anything about them so gold a golden fusion of citrus fruits woods balms and spices to give an interesting twist for winter top notes of bergamot lemon argentina and bitter orange seville with a heart of angelica root lavender from front oh the lavender okay it, it is just so seamless. No, actually, see, now, as soon as I read lavender, I'm getting that kind of camphoraceous, caramelised feel of lavender. And geranium, okay, I thought rose, wrapped in narrowly from Tunisia and cinnamon leaf resting on a base of a poponax, patchouli from Indonesia and a hint of frankincense. It is as delightful as that description makes it sound. Moving very, very swiftly on, because I was taken with this one as well, the white smoke from... Uh, Perfumer H from the new collection. The tobacco, by the way, is interesting. It's kind of like an 80s butch uh, masculine wood scent. Lots of sage, I think. That's what makes it feel quite 80s. I might do a written review of that one. Speaking of written, um, work calling, says Elias. Sneaky join and ends here. Yasu. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the, the latest review on the blog, by the way, on Persilase.com is of the new intense version of uh, Tom Ford Tuscan Leather, so check that out if you can. This, the white smoke, as soon as I sprayed it, I thought, wow, could this turn out to be one of my favourite perfumes of this year? I'm really, really, really enjoying what Lynn Harris is doing at the moment. Now, this is this is ostensibly the, the, the oriental, and yes, you do get a strong a resinous, vanillic note, but, but there's... Um, there's... There's, there's, there's an explosion of gunpowder. And, and I guess that's why I thought white smoke was the perfect name for it. I could be talking complete rubbish now, but I have a feeling that Lynn Harris made a gunpowder or a smoke scent for a perfume exhibition in London. I'd need to check my notes. Uh, this is the problem with doing things live. You can't just quickly flick through your notes to see whether what you're saying is actually correct. But I'm pretty sure she did something around gunpowder. Or maybe she did it for Sia Trudon. Maybe it was Revolution. Um, but that that sense of not just smoke filling a room, but of it actually exploding in front of you, of this in-your-face um, impact. I think that's what I get from here. There is a sense of movement here, but also somehow a sense of tranquility, because you get... And you know what else there is? There's this, there is a feeling of the birch tar from Tower Perfumes Lone Star Memories, which is maybe why I instantly fell for it. it it's, you know, I'm not saying it's a clone because it's not a clone by any means. Um, but that sense of that conflagration, that sense of being surrounded by heat, that sense of a of a rosy geraniumy soapy aspect to it. it it's all in here and it feels almost like you've walked into a a modern art installation you know in 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 like in Tate Modern in Britain you know where you sort of stand in the middle of a room and poof, smoke is is puffed into your face and you watch how people react to it it's really 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 compelling and very, very, very strongly evocative. Uh, very visual somehow. Um, is the lavender note strong, says Angeline? No, not particularly. I mean, you know, as, as you could see, I, I didn't even especially pick it up. The, the, main, the main thing is the citrus. It is, it is the Neroli. 
it is the lemony aspect. But when somebody says to you lavender, you can you then think, oh yes, of course there is a, there is a touch of lavender here. Lynn Harris very rarely makes any single thing stand out. Um, she must spend ages perfecting the blends. Oh, but I do like the white smoke. It's. I suppose the other image that comes to mind is of um, you know a bonsai tree. And and the beautiful precision of a bonsai tree, you know, like maybe maybe another sort of. I keep thinking of modern art installations and. And she does have that modernist vibe around her. This is almost being faced with this perfectly composed bonsai tree that somebody's, you know, been growing for years and they just made the tiniest little tweak. Um, nothing, nothing out of place, nothing out of place. Let me just very quickly read you the press material for the white smoke. Ethereal white smoke fused with chamomile, oris absolute, geranium and saffron resting on a base of smouldering woods. Agar wood, okay, the, again, not overplayed. Um, patchouli from Indonesia, tobacco from Turkey, sandalwood, and finally warmed with uh, benzoin resin, white musks, vanilla, and amber to make this an oriental masterpiece. It's really, really Moorish, really. It's almost like what would happen if Lone Star Memories met Garland's Abbey Rouge. And there, there is praise indeed from um, from Persilaise. Oh, it's it, it, it's something else. R really, really uh, interesting collection from from Lynn Harris for winter. Okay, don't forget that there will be a blotter update a little while uh, after the end of the broadcast. Birch tar is magical, says Ashvark, especially when used judiciously. It adds a warm and smoky aura. Yes, I mean the press notes didn't actually say birch tar, but. I, I definitely get that 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 burnt smoky feel. Um, we'll finish now, but uh, and and stop for about ten or so minutes while YouTube uploads this video and and leaves it on there permanently, and then we will be back with a new release from Frederick Mel. So for now, thank you very much for watching.